Hello, this is Jerry, and this video is to show you all the features for the MG HS Essence. This should be the same with HS Essence 1.5 liter turbo two drive and the two liter turbo all wheel drive. Um, so I'll go through the vehicle features from outside, then go to the inside as well. So first, start from the key. Uh, obviously, to start the vehicle or lock the vehicle, press the button. The vehicle uh, remains shut uh, with the windmill closed, and then. Press the button, when it opens up, or the doors opens up as well. So go through the boot itself. As long as obviously it's unlocked, simply tap a rubber button over there. Just give it one touch, it goes all the way. Otherwise, you can use the key to start the central control. Press and hold. It opens up all the way. Give it a few seconds. Uh, it will give you beeping all the things. So at the back. Underneath, you get a small storage here. Sorry about the mess we have, which is showing our used vehicle, and then spare wheel underneath for that. So that's how the back looks like. Um, covers, so pull out the cover just to do like this, otherwise, push inside. Uh, you can take this off if you like, simply pull it in the, in the center and take the tray off. And to close the boot, just one touch on the button. And give it three three seconds as well it'll close all the way cool on on the left hand side you find your fuel tank um, so if the vehicle is unlocked obviously just pushing to open the fuel tank uh, because it's a turbo variant uh, it's recommended for 95 or above only so premium fuel for news in the market and um, for going to the back door so the rear seats um, nothing crazy, but um, you can adjust the rear seats. For example, at, this is at the sort of straight up position. You can just pull this lever over here, drop it down a little bit. You have a laid back position. Otherwise, you can drop the, all the seats down. It'll be, it'll be flat through um, the back. And then pull it up, just use this lever, pull it all the way up. Same will apply from the, the other side, passenger side. You get a lever on the top headrest. And for the center control, just a display over here that opens the cup holders and some storage in there. And then for the rear passengers, you get air vents and charging ports for USB charging. And some cup holders, uh, some uh, cupboards, and some storage on the side. Cool. And also because you have keyless entry and keyless start, you notice a rub, small button on the key uh, on the door entry. So I have the key with me. Uh, I'm in the sort of two or three meter distance. You simply press this button, the door will lock, and press this button, or the doors will be unlocked. So that's how you do. Um, you have access to the through the do vehicle doors. Um, it will work on the driver and on the passenger door. Um, so yeah, that's pretty simple. And jumping from the driver position. Uh, so first thing you notice is the driver seat adjustment. So uh, it's all electric adjustments uh, apply from the driver and passenger only on the top spec license. So push forward, backward, up, down, rear adjustment for the back. And you notice a small uh, lever over here that allows you to change, uh, adjust the lumbar support. So push back or push forward. This one goes forward or backwards. Depends on how you like it on your driving position. And on the door bin, um, so you get door handles, unlock, unlock button uh, for central locking, uh, window controls front and rear, and then to adjust the wing mirror, click right, go up and down, change your right wing mirror, click left, go up and down, left and right to change your left wing mirror. Uh, you can manually fold in the wing mirror as well, but as the factory standard or as, as the factory standard default settings, and your vehicle wing mirror will automatically fold in when the vehicle is locked. And then this is for the window lock for the rear passengers, in case you have a younger passenger at the back or something like that. So yeah, that's pretty much everything on this side. Uh, to open the bonnet, you have a small lever over here to open the bonnet. And a very small storage for your coins and small things overall. And then this particular switch allows you to adjust the front headlight um, leveling, basically. If it's just yourself driving the vehicle, obviously give on zero, which is the highest level, it's totally okay. But if you do have all the passengers in, you have quite a lot of weight in the, inside the vehicle, you might want to dip down your headlights. Switch to two or three, whichever you like. So, up to you, up to your choice. Close the door. So, first thing to switch on the vehicle, because this has keyless entry, all you need to do is just foot on the brake and press this button over here to start the vehicle. And just mute this music first. Um, so, 
that's how the interior looks like once it's switched on obviously to switch off just one touch as well and to if you do switch on but uh, you did forgot to uh, hold your brake the vehicle will only switch on the electronic part the engine will not be able to start unless you press the uh, push the brake by the way so central control uh, center controls on the uh, front control on the on the steering uh, so these arrow buttons on the right hand side allows you to adjust the, the dash display so you notice you have a so the half digital dash plus the traditional analog dial so on the left you get your um, speedos on the right that's your rev counter and in the center you find your speedo your fuel tank and your uh, water temperature uh, readings uh, plus you get all the signs for uh, of the driving mode as normal and seatbelt warning for the back it just it will, it will take off when, uh, how do you say once you start driving off um, parking well on park um, gears and time temperature all that thing trip all the other things um, you use for the sensor display obviously we can change the display at the moment it shows digital speedo for example you can see the top bars with different icons on the top that allows you to change to left and right to change to different so the menus so if I click right this is the uh, so the assistant this um, assistant um, graphic it's not showing at the moment but when we start driving with the adaptive cruise control or land departure warning this will be active as well go right again this is on the setting menu so on the setting menu you can go up and down so the first one is the brightness level basically so click ok and go up and down to change your brightness it doesn't really show anything because we are daytime but once it, once you uh, once the, uh, the the light goes dark, you will be able to notice the uh, brightness leveling. Second one is called overspeed threshold. So if you can click OK, you can change your overspeed threshold. That means when you reach, let's say, particular 100k, 120k, the vehicle will give you a warning sound telling you are over that. Sp uh, you are, how do you say, you are at that speed limit. Um, so uh, you don't go over the speed limit. But you can change it to 115, 110, 130, whichever you like going through the OK and up and down. Next one is the next service. Service interval is 10,000 Ks or every 12 months, whichever comes first. It won't give you service reminder on the date, but it'll give you service reminder based on your case. So that's the next service button. After that, we can go right, and that's the warning information screen. So there's no warning at the moment, but let's say if your vehicle needs a service or when your tire, pre is, tire is punctured, or um, when your door was unlocked this will give you warning information at the moment no warning that means it's well good go right again we're going back we come back to the vehicle uh, information status basically so at the moment it shows digital case for example you can go up and it allows you to see this is as range to empty so my fuel tank is about quarter left this shows your uh, my range is about 138k but it, it, it is purely depends on how you drive the vehicle and let's go up again. That's your tire pressure monitoring system. So you can see the tire pressure is about 2.2 to 2.4, 2.1 bars. Uh, obviously, if one of them drops too low, it will give you a warning light on the dash. So at the moment, they're okay. Go up again. That's the battery voltage. So it's over 13 uh, volts. Uh, so it is okay. Obviously, if it drops too low, it's going to give you a warning and, or you need to charge your battery. Go back again. And that's your trip bolometer. That's just a cumulative total. Then you get current journey. We have been running the vehicle for five minutes or so, or something like that. Go up again. That goes back to digital case. So that's how to use these four arrows. Uh, most people obviously will be happy with the digital case. You can leave this forever. So the thing. Next one. Um, this button allows you to go to, for example, smartphone when your phone is connected uh, with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Um, at the moment nothing's connected so if I press the button it doesn't do anything same with this one this is a voice command for your uh, iPhone and Android phones again if your phone is not connected with the cable you won't be able to do anything with this button so on the left hand side up and down is the volume button mute button is in the center obviously uh, left and right allows you to change to your different tracks for or different radio stations while you listen to the music and then this is the phone call button so you can answer the phone call when someone calls in by pressing this button but at the moment nothing's connected so it doesn't do anything this is a source button so allows, that allows you to change between different source uh, between FM, AM and Bluetooth um, when your phone is connected obviously uh, so just easy controls when you're driving the vehicle so you don't have to reach all the way over there 
and then behind the steering you get you notice these pedal shifters on the left on the right uh, so on the left that's minus on the right that's plus so it means this will go lower gear obviously on the right hand side that go up a gear uh, it only you can only use them when you're on manual mode to, to switch manual mode I'll show you that later on the driving uh, driving board uh, on the gear selector basically um, and then behind the steering on the right hand side you'll find your windscreen controls windscreen wiper controls sorry about that uh, so um, when it's leveled it means it's off position so it doesn't really do anything so it's off here if you pull it down uh, and then it will resume back up again that means your wiper will wipe only once then if you pull up to this particular position to the sec to the first position it will be on automatic so the wiper will wipe automatically when there are enough green waters basically uh, at, at this auto position you can use this switch go forward or backwards so to, to so the least sensitive or max sensitive so it depends on how you choose obviously and then after that you can go up one more position again this will be on low speed so it will be on not automatic anymore it will just wipe at a continuous speed and then go up again this will be a higher speed so that's how the wiper works normally you leave on auto go off position uh, so for normal use and to watch the front windscreen just pull it back against the steering to watch the front one or uh, to use the rear wiper this small switch at the front so at the moment it's off so it doesn't do anything but go forward it'll, the rear wiper will be on and then pull it up pull it down and hold to watch the rear wiper otherwise pull it all the way forward and hold to watch the rear wiper so that's to how that's to operate the uh, windscreen wiper then on the left hand side that's your indicator and light control so obviously up and down for your indicator uh, light control uh, it is on auto at the moment you can switch it off just by switch back uh, it will resume back to the off position but it means it's off switch back again you, you can say it's auto again otherwise you can manually switch it on just for parking lights switch on for nighttime uh, lights basically and switch back to auto again and uh, if your how do you say your light is on or your auto lights are on for example you just show it um, a sort of indicator over there that means your headlights is on and if you have when your headlight is on you can switch the uh, focal lights on as well with this center switch so switch forward that's your front focal light switch again and release that's your rear focal light you can notice those and switch back no focal light again switch forward front focal light switch forward and release rear focal light and switch back to all position means it's off and switch out back to auto again it's off if your headlight is not on, for example, at daytime, it's, the auto light won't switch on. You switch this fog light; it doesn't do anything until you switch the uh, manual light on. And then you also get um, uh, how do you say flashlight? Just by pulling it backwards, you also get a high beam. Just by pulling forward, manual high beam. And the vehicle also has an auto high beam system. Uh, we'll explain that to. We'll explain that later when we go through the center screen. So yeah, that's basically everything about the. Uh, controls on the steering and behind the steering obviously horn is just your push your put your MG logo all the way uh, you also get a super spot button so I'll show you that first with this mode button here so you get the mode button so it allows you to change your driving modes if I click this button here you can see on that dash or on that dash or change to sport mode basically and then if I press that button again it goes to costume and the costume I can change different things uh, for example, um, I want the powertrain to be sporty, um, but I don't want the ESP to be sporty. I just want it normal. You can do that, and other things can be local. But it will disappear after a few seconds, so you do need to make sure you just click the mode button again to uh, change the things. Otherwise, all other four models is eco, normal, or sport, or custom. So these are the mode you can change by pressing the mode button. Um, so eco, just very economic. Obviously, just for better fuel consumption, normal is just perfect balanced. Every time you initially start the vehicle, it's always on normal. Uh, sport will give you a better throttle response. It will tighten up steering, just give you a better uh, driving experience. Um, costume, you can change all that things if you like. Um, otherwise, you do get the sport, super sport mode. So this is the individual button, individual mode basically, stand on its own. So on top of the sport, super sport will give you a more powertrain 
uh, how do you say, speed, all that things, to get you um, to hold the gear a little bit more, but give you the best throttle response and handling. So simply tap this button, you can see the MG logo, all that things like that. It tells us we're on super sport mode, even and the dial goes to orange, and then press the button again to disengage. It will go back to whatever the mode you want, for example, costume or normal or whatever. So that's how to use this button. Just press, change to super sport, wait for the refresh, just press again, goes back to norm or whatever you want, which is we were at costume. So that's about the driving mode. Uh, apart from that, things like has a light, that's all normal, just click. Uh, 360 button, so when you press the 360 button, can see your 360 views everything on the left and right and this is the 2d screen basically you can see what's at the front of us in front of us you can click tires you see your curb wheels on the left and right you see the front view and you see the rear view and you can do settings as well in, in terms of settings just small things you can if you don't want the line, how do you say line view you can turn it off and uh, you can have the auto view on low speed that means when you when you put your uh, indicator on when you're at low speed, the, the 360 camera automatically comes on itself. If you don't like it, you can switch it off. Other things, just a normal thing. And what else? Oh, you can do, for example, I have the 360 button here. I have the 360 here as well. Um, I simply just click 360, and then you can also have 2D and 3D. So if I click 3D, you can see it's a surround view over here. What I'll do is you can simply just grab the, um, just click the icon on the left and right. You can see it's just going around 3D, uh, which is very cool. Uh, <clears throat> because all the generic graphic always show this vehicle as a white color, even if your vehicle is black, blue, or red, it's gonna still be white, by the way. And that doesn't matter, that ch doesn't change your exterior color of the vehicle. Uh, so yeah, that's these buttons on the right hand side. And then you get boot release button as well. So click on, push and hold, and the boot, uh, the boot opens all the way. Press and hold, the boot closes all the way. Uh, you'll hear all the beepings as well. It's not the fastest, but it's gonna work. Um, handbrake, so to release the handbrake, you need to make sure your foot is on the uh, brake. So press this, the handbrake is off, pull this, handbrake will be down. So light is on, that means the handbrake is on. Or well, this parking brake is on, that means the handbrake is on, by the way. Um, you can automatically release once you um, put in the vehicle in drive. As long as you have your seatbelt on, just press the uh, accelerator, the vehicle will automatically release the handbrake as well. Next function is your auto hold. So how that works is, um, I'll need to have my seatbelt on to have this engage. <coughs> so you can see now it's all automatically engaged because it was previously engaged by previous driver. But if I tap this button, when the driver has seatbelt on, this button is not on, that means the function is off, so it doesn't do anything. But if I press this button, the, the orange light comes on, that means it's um, it's ready to go basically. Uh, so what it does is, when, when I'm, I'm going to put the car in drive, I'm going to start driving, then when I come to a complete stop, the vehicle will automatically hold my handbrake. Um, instead of me pushing the brake and then at that situation your red light will not show red instead it will show green parking light instead that means um, the vehicle holds my handbrake um, at the traffic lights so or when I come to a complete stop um, I don't need to push the brake um, but when I'm ready to go I'm just gonna press the accelerator the vehicle will go forward releasing the handbrake automatically so it does help with the stop start traffic but it all comes to you if you want to use it or not Otherwise, you can just press to turn it off, so it doesn't do anything. Next one is your um, hill descendability, basically. So simply press this button, and the hill descendability function will be on. You can see this green light over there. That means when you're going through, going really deep downhill, and the vehicle will hold your speed um, at the lower speed ratio. So you don't, how do you say, you don't, uh, you don't need to hold the brake all the time um, which will potentially worn out the brake pads or overheat the brake pads otherwise press it off and in normal situation you don't need to use this again unless you go to really deep downhill <coughs> so yeah that's everything about the center control gear selector obviously very easy use use your finger to pull the lever over there put on reverse again when you put on reverse the camera automatically comes on put on neutral put on drive and when you're on drive, you can switch to right-hand side as well. You'll be on S mode. 
So whenever you on something, you can see it's up here. I'm going to put on drive. You have, for example, reverse or drive. Uh, it shows S because I'm not. I'm on. Um, I'm on normal mode, but eco will show E. Normal will show drive instead. So I'm going to push it to the right. It's on S. Then you can go up and down to change your gears. By the way, up and down on S mode. Switch drive. It doesn't go up and down. Switch to S. Up and down to plus or minus. Otherwise, we can use the pedal shifters to go plus or minus. So yeah, that's the gear selector. Next thing, we'll talk about everything on this screen. Uh, so this screen on the top, um, it's just three different panels. First one is your FM radio, basically. Just mute this. <laughs> One second, so that's your radio screen basically. Uh, this display your whatever you're listening to at the moment. This display your favorites basically. You can go through different screens, for example, 97.4, go left left and right, allows you to go to different available radio stations next and last. Uh, if you do want to save this one at the first one, simply press and hold. You can now see it's it's got a heart icon, that means it's already saved that first one. If you do want to save, uh, see all your uh, local stations, just simply click this bar at the right hand bottom, refresh your list, that's all the available stations. So that's how to operate the radio. Same will apply to AM, or if your Bluetooth is connected, you can click music as well. Uh, at the moment, you won't be able to. Uh, audio allows you to change different settings for system beeps, all that things. Um, EQ settings, you can change your costume, pop music, classic music, whichever you like. Sound stage allows you to see what's um, what your, your music sort of sound distribution, front and rear, left and right. Simply click these bars, it goes to different ways. Uh, otherwise, you can get 3D sound, 3D sound just for the driver, 3D sound for everyone, or no 3D sound. So basically, everyone. Uh, virtual subwoofer. Or no or on, um, again, up to you. You can change that uh, while you're driving, so that's pretty simple. Uh, anytime, if you do want to jump back to home screen, the third icon, just press that, goes back to home screen, and press the, this to lower the volume, up the volume. And this is the car setting button, so exactly the same as this one, just click this, it goes to car setting. Uh, aircon, so whenever you want to change your aircon, you need to either press this button or press this, goes to aircon screen. So yeah, that's how the aircon screen looks like. You get rear demister, by the way. Uh, if you do want to switch on, you need to press this button. There's no controls here. Uh, front windscreen blast, uh, that allows you to uh, go through that in the, for example, cold morning, something like that. And then we are, when we are at, I'm just going to close it, when we are at the aircon screen, uh, so you can have an old blue or, or uh, green light telling you that function is pressed. But if it's not pressed, it shows a white color that means not pressed. So, for example, I selected that top and bottom for the aircon um, display, and it is on. But if I press this, it is not off. And press this again, it is on. Uh, AC, AC is on at the moment. Uh, recirculation is off, it just air from outside. Otherwise, I can click recirculation or air from outside. So, that's how to operate the aircon. Fan speed up and down, just simply click each bars from 1 to 8. Uh, temperatures go up and down this way as well. You'll notice also the sync button. So if the sync is off, uh, I will be able to adjust the, the um, temperature on each side. It's called dual zone climate control. Otherwise, simply click sync. Both are going to be connected to each other. So you can only control temperatures on the driver's side. Uh, plus heated seats at the front. So left and right, click that to have heated seats on. Cool, that's all there you come. Next one, the last big panel, which is navigation. Click that. We're just gonna wait for it to refresh. Yeah, click accept. And this is how the map looks like. This is obviously where we are. Um, if you do want to change anything, simply click this bar at the right bottom. Uh, you can see the first one is new route. So click new route. If you do want to search anything, just go to address. And for example, you need to type town or suburb first. Or what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do Pokikoi. So P, K. Uh, make sure you give it a plenty of time to react. Um, if you're too fast or anything, it just gonna looks silly. Uh, first one, obviously, I'm um, just type Pokikoi. You can see it, it's already see the um, research result. Simply click the result. Street name, gonna click King Street. 
so you can see King Street comes up over here I'm just click King Street and number click number I'm gonna do 21 for example 21 King Street comes up do that you can see that's where the 21 King Street is I'm gonna select destination you can see it's the root garden is telling me this is the route this will take me about one minute 500k 500 meters um, forward then just start navigation obviously we'll start you can see it's guiding us to that way uh, with the rough time all that things obviously if you don't need it click this and click delete route click OK now it's gone um, otherwise you can do quite a few settings or route all that things you can save your favorite uh, favorite um, how do you say addresses or your home addresses or you can change your sound navigation view all the things so you can personalize quite a few things just in this bar otherwise go back to home screen click this button here next one will be to connect your smartphone so the phone button is here and obviously this is this is on at the moment but if you're first getting into the vehicle it's gonna show off position so all you need to do is press this on button <coughs> Now you can see the Bluetooth is on, and your Bluetooth name will have a unique name over here. You can use your phone to search it, and then these are the devices that uh, this particular dev uh, vehicle has stored in. Uh, if you do want to connect any one of them, just click this connect icon. Uh, when they are white colored, that means that they are not connected. When they are blue colored, that means someone is connected. And if you do want to delete these devices, just simply click delete, and just wait for a couple seconds. It should delete. Just try again. I think it's trying to connect so it doesn't help me to delete anyway um, I'll show you how to connect my phone to it so I've got an iPhone here I'm just gonna unlock and for example I'm gonna go to my settings and go to Bluetooth you can see it's searching at the moment I'm just gonna wait for a couple seconds you can see this name comes up just like uh, the, the screen name I'm just click that and it says uh, code you don't doesn't matter which code it is, just click pair and do your online your contact. I'm gonna click allow. Yep, cool. Now you can see on the top screen my phone has been connected. It shows a blue icon and now I can delete other device. I'm just click delete. And you see the devices have been deleted. Click delete, click delete. Now only my phone is connected. And then you can call see your call history, you can see your contacts, you can see your keypad whenever your phone is connected. Whenever your phone is connected, this Bluetooth icon will show green or blue color, whatever you call it. Um, and if it's not connected, it'll show a white color instead. <coughs> so that's to connect your smartphone. When someone calls in again, use this button to answer the phone call. Otherwise, press home button. If you want to listen to any music from, for example, my phone at the moment, click music. Uh, whatever is playing on my phone will play through the speakers. Nothing is playing, so it shows nothing over there. Anyway, click home button. Uh, next one will be the car settings. So this will involve a lot of things like uh, driving assist um, and comfort and convenience. A lot to talk about. Uh, let's go through that. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, first one is speed assist systems. So at the moment it is off position. Uh, so, um, but your speed rating still on. You can see this uh, this sort of round dial over there. That means the vehicle has a sensor at the front. It will pick up your uh, speed, um, how do you say, speed limits in your area uh, will scan the whole road basically. Uh, if your area's speed limit is 60, it's going to display over here. Uh, the next road is 100, it's going to display over here telling you what's your speed limit. Um, so, where the speed assist mode at the moment is off, so it's only going to display the speed limit over there, nothing, it's not going to do anything else. Uh, but if you do change to menu, you can see here that we are we are, we have another logo over there. That means your your speed assist system is set at menu. Uh, what's it gonna do is <coughs> um, what's that gonna do is when the vehicle sees your speed limit, let's say 100, but you're driving you're driving over 100, and the vehicle give you a ping sound telling you over your speed limit. Uh, but that speed limit is not really set by you. It's more like set by the scanning. Uh, some people find it annoying, some people don't like it, so it's totally up to you to see whether you want to use it or not. Next one, intelligent. So you can see now that light will be there, and that means your, your vehicle will see the speed limit in your area, for example 100 again, uh, give you a ping, ping sound when you go over that speed limit, and then it will also give you, limit, uh, sorry, give you a throttle limitation. Uh, 
doesn't allow you to go for that certain speed. Um, again, most people don't, don't like it, um, but it is a cool function that you can have it. Um, so really up to you to see if you want to use it. If you don't like it, just switch it off. There's no icon over there. Another thing is if you have your cruise control on, uh, you won't be able to have the speed limit on, by the way. It's always going to speed uh, stays off. Uh, so that's your uh, cruise control. Land assist systems. So at the moment it's off. So there's no light on the dash, basically. But I'm going to press this on. You can see on the top right, the orange light over there. That means that function is ready to engage. It is on. You can see our graphic changes to the adaptive cruise control plus the land departure warning screen as well. And that what that means is when you when your vehicle drives over 60 k per hour, the vehicle will see your line marking on the left, on the right. And in case you are likely to drift your line marking, or you are drifting drifting out of your line marking, the vehicle give you a ping sound telling you oh you are you're over your line marking. You are going to over the ditch, or you're going to go into the incoming traffic. And um, this is an alert, by the way. You can see the system mode on the second line. <coughs> Next one is departure assist. So if you change to departure assist, the logo will change a little bit. Now, what that means, it's still going to give you the alert mode sound. Uh, for example, give you alert if you bounce between our markings. And then it will also uh, give you a very steering turn before you drive over your line marking. Um, so it will, it will sort of bounce you between the line marking left and right when you get really, really close. So that's how the um, departure assist works. Last one, the lane keeping. So this is more advanced. So as long as the vehicle sees the line marking over 60 k's, the vehicle steering will always try to balance uh, you in the right center, uh, even if you're far away from your line marking. So it helps you balancing uh, driving a motorway. Um, so they, they it does. Uh, it is a more advanced feature. It is very cool on motorway when you drive a straight line from here to Hamilton, for example. Uh, so that's how the lane keeping works. Um, in case you do indicate or, or left and right, that particular function from alert, from departure warning, from land keeping will disengage. Basically, allows you to go for your line marking, uh, and you can also force it to override it because in the day it's you are you are driving the vehicle. That that is purely assistance systems, and then you will notice this small switch just on the indicator. This button allows you to temporarily engage and disengage this function whenever this is on basically so let's say this is on at the moment in the center screen and this light bar and this light control is on and then i'm just going to press and hold sorry just one press now that function is switched off i'm going to press again that function is back on press again no function is off press again function is off this is just a secondary switch allows you to switch off switch on temporarily but if I do switch it off over here, I won't be able to switch on, switch off with this button anymore. So things I, I use this button is when I'm driving straight line on motorway, I'm happy with land keeping, I'm just going to leave it on land keeping basically. But next minute I jump off the motorway, I'm going to go a country road, but I don't have time to go in the screen to, to actually switch it off. I'm going to just simply use this button to switch it off. So that's how, the, how to use this secondary button. Otherwise, if you don't like it, you're going to permanently switch it off. Just press it off. You, you don't need to use this function. Uh, audible alert, you can switch it off or switch on if you like. Uh, alert sensitivity, as you can switch low, normal, up to you. Normal is perfectly fine. So, yeah, that's about the land keeping. Next one is MG Pilot. So, it is on at the moment. And the engine pilot uses a thing called cruise control, basically. So, you're in, you get indicator on the top and you get the... Um, cruise control at the bottom so I'm just gonna steer it steering so cruise control function all the way forward uh, it is off position so it doesn't really do anything um, but you can, I'm gonna pull it back it is will be on, on position for example when it's on position you can see the cruise set at a particular case you can see this light bar over there that's the for the cruise control then you get the bars in front of your vehicle telling you your distance between the front traffic uh, at the moment, it's not working because it shows orange light. But once we start driving, uh, you, you you need to tap this set button on the side. Just tap this set button. Uh, once you start driving at a certain speed, the vehicle will set a particular case. It will display over here, for example, 50 k's power. Um, your vehicle and the light will switch to green light. That means your vehicle will drive at 50 k's power, um, for example, a motorway. And then 
if the road is clear it's gonna keep on 50k for example and to change your set speed go up and down to change your set speed for example we were at 50 go up once allows you to change to 55 60 65 for example go down goes to 45 40 35 for example if you do want to change one by one instead of five by five you can go up and hold it'll, it'll go one by one but it is pretty fast it's very hard to control that particular speed i think round five is okay just one touch one touch or something like that and um, you can also change your distance you can see this switch here allows you to change your distance between you and the front vehicle because this vehicle again has all the advanced sensors at the front so it has the adaptive cruise control so what you need to do is just switch it back or switch it forward that allows you to change the bars into the front of you so let's say you switch back you can see that line goes back switch back again that line is go to the closest so this is your vehicle to closest distance it's about two seconds traveling distance switch that three seconds switch that four seconds just give you a rough idea of how the distance works basically what that means is if your cruise control is set at 50 but the vehicle driving in front of you only drive like say 30 k's your vehicle will automatically break and um, to keep you in a safe distance either it's long or short distance um, so before you crash into it so thing where you don't need to push the brake or accelerator to engage any braking and acceleration your vehicle will automatically uh, change your set speed basically so that's your cruise control settings um, and then you will notice a cancel and resume as well that means when we are on cruise control if you do want to cancel the cruise control just light touch forward not pushing all the way but light touch forward uh, it will cancel the cruise control temporarily and then next minute if you do want to resume back to cruise control again just pull it back to resume or you can just press set to set at your current driving speed again another way to cancel the cruise control is simply apply the brake that's very simple and once the cruise control is off it's going to show obviously uh, a once the cruise control is paused it's going to show the orange light um, but you just push all the way no cruise control light that means it's completely off so it doesn't do anything so that's the cruise control setting uh, over there uh, hopefully that's easy to understand it's uh, kind of tricky if you get you are getting too used to it first time um, yeah but that's how the cruise control works and next one will be the forward collision system basically so a forward collision system is all on at the moment so you alert mode you have emergency braking that means it will give you alert first before you are likely to crash into something or someone and then eventually it will give you an emergency braking um, if necessary but if you don't need it just click alert and you can do a confirm or anything uh, obviously we don't want to switch off we'll just leave on emergency braking sensitivity you can do no low normal or high and um, pedestrian auto braking you can do off or on as well so that's your choice of this how to have these functions on and off rear driving assist uh, so it is on the moment um, blind spot detection it's your it's your wimmer light on that and light up here this basically allows you to this Sorry, this basically allows you to um, have uh, how do you say, uh, know who is coming behind you in terms of your blind spot. It will light up when someone is traveling behind you with in a certain speed. Um, lane change assist. Um, it, it just basically you go up and down the indicator. Um, that tells you that someone is at your blind spot. Rear cross traffic alert is when you put on reverse, and the vehicle sends someone is actually crossing behind you um, on your on your drive path and the vehicle give you an indication or beeping on your rear camera telling you that someone is actually traveling behind you in case you reverse too fast uh, to crash into someone so that's all in the driving assistance next one comfort and convenience uh, so first one is lighting ambient lighting so ambient lighting is on so it will, you have all the glow uh, underneath the dash basically um, at the moment it's in bright sunlight it's very hard to see um, anyway you can change your ambient lighting to for example on and off to lighting mode on auto you can do driving mode so you will switch between driving mode but you can also do individual so you can change your brightness all the way up you can change your colors left and right to red to green to anything like so that's the ambient light follow me home that means when your vehicle um, has switched off or switched on um, at night and your headlight stays on for f I think 15 or 20 seconds uh, if you don't like it you can turn it off if you like it you can leave it on find my car next one is basically when you 
um, let's say when you can't find your vehicle in the car park um, in <coughs> sorry about that and um, we can't find your vehicle in the car park you just click click as long as, long as your vehicle is locked just use the key to keep uh, clicking the lock button your vehicle will give you lights and horn or lights whichever you like basically so yeah that's all about lighting locking you can change your central locking you can change your passive unlock to say all those jo just drive a door um, this is the air cones and um, so the air cone um, settings you can change your auto blow level to medium high or level or high or low uh, Monty zone temperature just on dew or last mode or mono. So dew is is always gonna um, change on dew. Uh, mono is just um sort of synced, and last mode depends on when you, before you get out of the vehicle. So normally you always want to change on last mode. Uh, auto heated rear mirror, so it is off at the moment. You can switch it on. That means whenever you start the vehicle in the morning, the uh, heated rear mirror will heat uh, will heat it up for about. I think 10 minutes or so, uh, so you don't get, get it fogged up. But if you don't like it, you can switch it off. Other, first one is tailgate up position. So the tailgate um, position, you can change the tailgate position. At the moment, it's fully opened. But if your garage is quite small or you, you are in a small car park uh, very, with limited um, height, um, hi, sorry, height allowance, uh, you can change to half or, or a third or something like that. Uh, mirror auto fold that means when you lock the vehicle the mirror will automatically folds in obviously um, steering wheel control at the moment it's on uh, smartphone so that means this button over here you can when you press it goes to smartphone but you can change to home as well for example i'm going to press this it goes back to home so that's just one thing about the um, that particular function it's in the driving maintenance uh, comfort and convenience um, in the other settings Yep. Last one, uh, driving and maintenance. So stability control it is on at the moment. You don't want to switch off if you drive in the sort of uh, mm, what do you call it. You don't want to use it when you're driving in the city. Basically, it's just a safety feature to have. But if you are how do you say stranded in a, in a mud um, muddy place or anything like that, you may need to switch it off. But up to your decision. Uh, factory setting you can uh, reset the whole screen if you need to otherwise you don't need to just simply go back to home screen uh, next one is your setup so setup is purely for the screen settings first one is audio we have done that in the radio settings you can change your eq settings sound stage uh, radio you don't need to change this uh, time uh, you can change your time schedule for example this is wrong at the moment we're going to change to 2021 for example today should be 10th of nine so month is 10 and date is 9 for example uh, so you can you can switch it whenever you like you can also have gps gps sync as well but it's not all the time accurate you can change all the time as well next one bluetooth uh, so you can change your bluetooth settings where you can do that in the phone settings anyway uh, display you can change your brightness display at night at day you can change your settings then switch back to auto and system allows you to see the system display as well so that's pretty much about the settings and then last bit will be the um, Apple CarPlay Android Auto connections so at the moment nothing's connected it shows gray color same as the Android Auto uh, if I do connect it so underneath you have two cables in the storage compartment uh, so first one is for charging only then the one on the left I'm just gonna have to push the gears backwards so on the one on the left is your uh, charging gear uh, sorry is your Apple CarPlay position basically so I'm gonna just push this thing and, and the other side connect to the iPhone basically I'm just gonna unlock my iPhone and just wait for it to refresh it should connect it Yep, it's now connected. So, do you want to un uh, unlock the Apple CarPlay? Just allow. Now you can see the Apple CarPlay pops up on the screen itself. So it basically display your phone screen on the on the um, on the vehicle screen. So you can, just like your smartphone, you can swap left and right. You can go to your maps, Google Maps, all that things. Uh, you can change your all the settings as well. And you can go back to the home screen. Either click the home button or click the MG icon. MG logo goes back to home screen. Now you can see this icon lights up. Just press that, it goes back to the um, Apple CarPlay screen. 
uh, and you can have display on the things and all that things as well I haven't set these phone up so it doesn't really show anything um, also while you're driving you can also use Siri command so to use Siri either press and hold this button and you can active Siri so you can talk to Siri ask Siri all the questions otherwise you can also use um, this voice command as well simply tap this button you can see Siri pops up can talk to Siri say what's the weather like I'll ask a Siri to call someone someone or ask a Siri to send a Jerry a text something like that you can do whatever you like with the Siri so that's how to operate with the Apple CarPlay uh, if you do have an Android uh, same same function just connect to the left um, USB cover and then connect your uh, Android Auto phone make sure you are parked uh, somewhere and go through all the steps. The Android phone does have a little bit more steps to go through authorization wise uh, before you can actually connect it, but should have all the things available as well. Uh, other than that, you get a 12 volt socket to charge your phone. Um, yeah, nothing too special. Um, and then you get the um, center console for cup holders and also storage at the back. Uh, all the New Zealand customers should get all your owner's manual, everything in the glove box uh, if you need to do it for something. And then on the top, that's your lighting control. This is a door light, that means it's push thing when the one of the door is unlocked, or the light will light up, otherwise, push it off. Uh, reading light, reading light at the front, reading light, all the reading lights, very simple. Sunroof, so this has a panoramic sunroof on the top spec, just push all the way in. That shade um, close, basically, otherwise, go all the way back, shade, the shade will open. And then you have two ways to open the um, glass roof. The back glass, you won't be able to move that at all. The front glass will do. So push this upwards. The front glass um, just tilt to give you a sort of airflow. Just pull it down to close that. Otherwise, just push all the way. It goes all the way back. You can stop anywhere just by second touch on the, on the button. Or just second touch. Otherwise, it goes all the way. And this will go as far as it goes. Otherwise, just push all the way back, and this is how it looks like for the for the sunroof. Yep, uh, pretty simple. And that um, sunglasses holder. Yep, cool. That should be all of it. That should be all of the fun fun for the functions to get you started with your MG HS Essence. Um, if you do have any questions, um, please let me know. Leave a comment or contact me directly. Cool. Thank you very much.